it's been uh, 11 days since my last video clip of the project and uh, it probably looks like nothing has changed with the doors, the, the doors glued in but I've worked on it for at least some time every day and most of that time has been just doing this bit and this bit which we previously omitted uh, but finally this evening you can see that I have actually taken the stage of gluing the third floor on um, the little hidden tunnel has taken a while as well and the back doors in the, the drain cover there the drain grill I should say and be able to finally start working on the balcony I hope sticking that door in and then the bridging part which originally was going to be all part of the third floor but now is going to have to be sort of scratch built essentially why while that is uh, drying I can actually start thinking uh, about the bit of thatch roof which is going to go on on bearish somehow that slopey bit and back to the uh, vitally important principle of looking at uh, source material now um, this is a thing I noticed way back last summer summer before the last um, and it's the, the, the principle of how thatched roofs work. And again, looking at other people's models and ideas of medieval timber framed buildings, just like they don't look carefully enough and they, they don't notice that the timbers never stick out proud of the, of the wall itself, just kind of imagine, I don't know, copy other people's model timber frame buildings and just keep copying that error. The other thing that often seems to be wrong is they don't appreciate just how thick a thatched roof is. Of course, usually, because the thatched roof presents difficulties, they'll just skip that and they'll have tiles or shingles, as the Americans call them, if they're made of wood. But the real thing to notice here is just how far the thatch sticks out. It can be as much as three feet thick on some buildings. And you'll see there, this is the, uh, the museum in Hinckley. You can see that these buildings don't have gutters. Gutters and downpipes haven't been invented yet. The water runs down the slope of the roof and then it falls off and it falls clear of the walls, reducing the damp that would penetrate in, in the building. And what actually forms that eave, um, that overhang that, that takes the rainwater clear of the wall of the building is the actual thickness of the thatch. Uh, and then I'm looking at uh, examples of decayed thatch because I don't want my thatch to look as perfect as that baby teddy bear first. So I'm going to have to dirty it and damage it um, and not rely too much on its colour. I think probably sort of weathering it with my airbrush, taking it down to a, a duller brown will be the thing. And there's, a, there's an art example of a rather rougher job. You can see it's got uh, moss and algae growing on the end. It's a cruck framed building and thick as you like. The thicker the better. It's made out of grass and straw so it's relatively cheap. Pile it on thick. There's a nice really decayed one. I don't want to go too decayed um, but I want to make it look like it's due for a rethatch. There's another good example of what it looks like after anywhere between 20 and 50 years, depending on the weather. I'd like to get that sort of coloration and um, 
irregularity to it. That's an example of bad patching, apparently. This is a th modern Thatcher's website. Well, that, sorry, that's the example of bad thatching. Um, professional Thatcher wouldn't, uh, wouldn't do that. Working at last on the bridging section and last night I sort of put these bits in and I'm almost at the, I'm, I'm at the stage now of almost sort of properly constructing the thing from individual timbers. This is going to have to be filled in with something and then made to look like uh, the Watland door which is the, the first time other than on those side sections I've actually done something like that and uh, I put a piece in there this section is not going to lift out to be finished off properly and then slot back in because these these surfaces here and here are quite um, irregular so this is literally just an, an end piece with a bit of foam board stuck to these with glue same up the other end and one piece stuck in lengthwise and to be honest I'm a bit confused and stuck and it's almost midnight and I haven't started on it yet today and yeah, uh, making it up as I go along, bodging it, which is good, providing I can sort of work the bodges into the um, higgledy bickledy design. This inside that that area, front and back, I think there would be staircases. So anywhere you get staircases in a building, uh, you would have windows. So I'm thinking I would like to have a little. Anglo-Saxon style window in there which I've never sort of seen in wood but remaining stone Anglo-Saxon windows one of which I saw earlier today or maybe yesterday on a random Twitter post or somewhere which means I'm going to struggle to find it it was a, a little Anglo-Saxon window really cute little Anglo-Saxon stone window frame that had been dug up on an archaeological site it would be quite good to integrate something like that in there but I don't know what to do and I think I'm going to have a sleep sometimes it's good to have a sleep on things and I'm literally going to do that maybe I won't actually work on it tonight maybe maybe it'll have to wait but I will to sleep get some energy back and hopefully when I wake up I've got a, a, a brighter thinking brain with some ideas for solutions on that area anglo-saxon windows look like that those are my sources and I've never seen anglo-saxon windows in a timber frame building of course so they're, they're anglo-saxon inspired windows and um, that's what I've come up with so far. Uh, it's using bits of uh, leftover foam. And these, which I've had for over a year now, New Year's Eve last year, we're mid, mid January again. Um, I got these from my brother and sister in law at a party. I was thinking about the project, as one does. And. Um, I'll be using these posh cocktail sticks from Marks and Spencers. So there you go. And um, I inquired about them and he says you can have those. Um, the main thing I want them for, of course, is the, the balcony. They're going to be the, the little rail that goes down there. But I just worked out that they're perfect for the little pillars. This is something I've seen in real uh, buildings. I have actually seen places where the original uh, timbers that are actually supporting timbers, it's a bit like you hear 
bad DIY stories about people who decide to knock a wall down in their house without finding out whether or not it's a partition wall or a supporting wall. But I have seen this. I have seen original timbers that have been cut into by a later modification. So one at the front, one in the back, they're going to go in there just as little pretty windows that have been cut in to illuminate stairways. And uh, while the paint on that's drying, I'm just going crazy on the inside of there. Horrible, messy job, hot glue everywhere. Um, but generally securing this all together before I start taking those pins out. For several hours on uh, the house today, mostly on this fourth floor, um, which was originally my notion was um to for that fourth floor to cut in here um but every picture of a medieval building of more than one or two or three tiers which aren't very many never shows that happening and even though it's meant to go more fantastical as it goes higher um i have just settled in the end for uh, another jetty so i've completely had to redesign uh, those blocks and of the remaining blocks I've had to cut bits out and start marking them up and it's been it's been okay it's been very very time consuming and uh, I'm sort of ready to stop and I finally remembered gosh I can now finally start working on my balcony so those bits of floor frame that I cut more than a month ago I think now can finally be stuck in because apart from a little bit of, uh, you know, sort of painting touching up and tidying up um, this has got to be painted with the right kind of white and that timber's got to be painted and cleaned up a bit I can now finally start to do my balcony and I I think it's gonna look all right it's gonna be a, a hickledy pickledy uh, balcony that you'd be rather worried about walking along and uh, of course when I was cutting those I didn't give any thought at all to the next dragon beam which is also going to be the beam that the, the sign hangs on so a lot of hours but uh, making progress this evening I've had somebody constantly under my feet, sometimes literally standing between my feet while I've been trying to do fiddly fiddly bits on here. Uh, that has taken a long time putting in all these cross bits, probably a more technical term than that. Um, there's the dragon beam, there's all the cross bits all the way along there. There's another couple of these floor beams that have got to go in there. And then here, I'm even working on uh, some steps. So I've had to make two of these, which uh, I think are called stringers, the actual parts of a staircase that the steps rest on. I'm not sure if that's the right term, but I think they're called stringers. literally next to my feet the whole time trying to tell me something but I don't know what it is probably about dinner the uh, planking has been browned and then mostly greyed and is ready to go in on the balcony but then I've got sort of distracted putting in the vertical balcony posts that are going to support some sort of canopy. I then decided that I can't actually go much further than that because the the structure that's going to form the, the roof of that will need to be built onto the floor above. So the floor above is going to have to be completed before I go uh, back to that. Some bits of the balcony have been pre-painted uh, other bits I couldn't
pre-paint because it would have meant waiting for things to dry. Um, so anyway, I, I, I abandoned that knowing that I've got to do the, do the layer above first. Uh, this layer is going to be a warehouse, I've decided. Uh, not exactly a warehouse, a treasury um, with all, all the wizards' um, takings over years of successful adventuring stuck inside. Uh, and the windows have been cut out and I <laughs> just noted that I've missed a panel there. Um, I've begun painting the wattle bits. Uh, it's a real pain to paint. It's, it takes at least two coats uh, and then the actual woodwork takes one coat and a dry brush. The whole of it later on is going to be weathered errors like whole panels that haven't had their first coat they've got to be fixed uh, and then there's some faults and things that I've I've worked in so there's uh, breaks where I'm filling and holes where I've put in a little bit of the exposed uh, wattle I'm going to do something with that and here this top piece snapped when I was cutting out the window so I've Sort of glued that in place into its broken position. Uh, it's going to be a rot in this timber here that's caused that window to, to collapse and there'll be some sort of temporary propping in there. Possibly made from this. Now I went into a um, an art and craft shop today, which you never usually do uh, because browsing in those huge art and craft shops is a just a waste of time. Unless you're the kind of person that hasn't got ideas and doesn't know what you want to make when I suppose looking at actual materials um, would give you those ideas. I don't usually have that problem so I normally buy stuff on, on uh, eBay because I'll know what I'm looking for and I'll browse there, it's much more efficient. Uh, but these I spotted by accident, I'd gone in for lunch really and I thought well I'll have a little wander around before I go back and do some more work on the project. And these were a pound and they're actually thicker than thicker than matchsticks. I'd say those are about two two and a half, maybe even three millilitre, millimeters, and uh, they're good and long. And they're going to be perfect for the for the rails, uh, for the for the balcony railing, uh, at the top and bottom of that railing. I'm going to be able to drill holes in that and settle my uh, fancy cocktail sticks um, in there. I don't know how I'm going to cope with the fact that uh, the balcony is all crooked. Uh, so I may not use these. I may have to cut it out with foam. The problem with foam is when you poke hole in holes in foam and then you stick uh, sticks into it, 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 it's going to split. That's right, sticking wooden cocktail sticks into fairly thick pieces of foam, into the little thin pieces that are of that sort of dimension, which they would be nice and flexible enough to sort of follow these irregular shapes. Um, but they, I think I would have trouble with splitting. But um, the issue now is to uh, give this another coat, which takes... Oh, an hour, two hours, so I sit there listening to a podcast, carefully painting these rectangles as uh, neatly as possible, trying to, not to miss any outs, including some exposed bits round there that are going to stick out of the tower. Ah, and then the woodwork. Uh, oh, and I also marked out the, started marking out where the end building is going to be. That's the eaves of the the ripped away building. This is going to be designed to look like the inside of a building that's not there anymore. Um, but I do, I've more also marked out that I've got to paint these panels, which I now see that I've forgotten to do.